Erfurt is a small town in the central German state of Turanga in East Germany. Welcome to the wonderful world of travel. I'm John Haggins. I'm here in Erfurt and this is unbelievable. It's Christmas market and I'm having a glue vine and it's just an incredible, wonderful historical town. I love it here. Um, I'm Andreas Müller. You are in the restaurant Zum Nord in Erfurt and we have prepared uh, during tumblers for you. It's a very simple receipt. You need only potatoes and potatoes and potatoes. And we prepared the potatoes uh, in many distinctions. And we have a dumpling. Um, we have uh, potatoes, half and half. One of the potatoes we grind with a rape. You can use the old fashioned style. On, you can use uh, Food processor. The next step, we need the kitchen towel and put in the potato. And then we squeeze out the potato juice. important to make it really dry it out. In uh, Turinga we have a, a press for this. It's a mechanical press for press this down and you need this was very dry. The next step you make the cooked potatoes, cook another one of the potatoes cooking and then uh, when it's very um, smooth and press, and then you make a mashed potato. And then give the sharp in the mashed potato. It, the potato dough is very soft and smooth. And then we need, uh, need uh, water in the hand, and then we need the potato dough in the middle. We put the crumbs, the bread crumbs, on you have the dumpling. The bigger, it's from the grandma, the bigger, the bigger potato dumplings from Thuringia. And it's um, important you press a little bit the bread crumbs in the middle of the dumpling. Let's give, give a little bit um, space for air in the middle. And the uh, dumpling, it's very, yeah, it's nice. Very important, you have a big pot with many of uh, water with good salt water, just like the ocean. Tastes like the ocean, that's just important. And then the water must boil. And then we give the dumplings in the water and then no more boil. It's only for 10 minutes and when the dumplings come up, five minutes and dumplings are ready. Uh, when the dumplings are ready to eat, then no, never cut it with a knife, only split it with the fork and then goes the sauce inside and then you can eat the dumplings. I've been hearing incredible things about Andreas. He's an incredible executive chef at this restaurant and it's a family name. Tell me the name. The name is Zum Norde. And it's, it comes back how, how many years? Uh, how many years? Uh, I think it's uh, 25 years. 25? Yes. Well, that's not that old, considering Germany is, you know, an old country. The name is uh, it's older. Yeah, the, oh, okay. The hotel is 25 years here at this space. Right. And with this name. And everybody rushes in the door for your specialties. And what are your specialties? My specialties, um, it's Turinga special. Yeah, we have uh, wild boar from the Turinga Forest. It's very good. Mm -hmm. We have uh, sausage, Turinga sausage. And is, we, is that bratwurst or just bratwurst, all kinds? Bratwurst, just called bratwurst oh, in yeah. German. And we have uh, dumplings. Great dumplings like you just demonstrated. Yeah, um, great, great dumplings, um, small, 
here in the gastronomy we make the little smaller and my mom makes bigger dumplings. And your grandma makes even bigger. Yeah, the, big, <laughs> the biggest. <laughs> they keep growing yeah. by the generation. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I love the fact that they're very, very soft, very tender, and you can easily apply them with a fork, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, it's uh, important. Yes. Important rule from Turinga, the dumplings are waiting for the guests, not the guests waiting after dumplings. Yeah. You know, it's interesting too, traveling around German as we have, yeah. and we've tried all the different dishes, and it's really an introduction to things that, that's what's so great about travel. You get to taste all these things, be introduced to all these wonderful dishes everywhere around the world, and the German dishes are very special, especially <laughs> the bratwurst, which I have probably eaten a dozen of them, and yeah. love it. It's just fantastic, and the difference between the seasoning inside. Yeah. Which reminds me of another question, for the dumpling, do you include something in the middle of it as well? Yeah, in the middle, it's important you make uh, breadcrumbs in the middle. It's for the light, for the air space inside the dumplings ah. and make the dumplings uh, smooth and soft. Yeah. It's helped. The, right. Yeah. And the dumplings, how far back in history do they go for Germany, as a matter of fact? 300 okay. years, I think. Yeah. Potatoes comes to Germany. And then we make potatoes, mashed potatoes, and dumplings, and puffers, and other forms of uh, potatoes. Yeah. And then some of the other dishes, you said wild boar, and then you have other dishes, like uh, what, for instance? You, you have steaks from uh, Turinga beef. We have good beef in Turinga. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have vegetarian dishes. It's uh, very important. Oh, at, sure. At the time. Yeah. Sure for the cl climate and it's everyone's so conscious of you know organic food and yeah. being vegetarians Retro, yeah. and so forth we have um, eggs from Steffi it's oh. a neighbor of, right of, um, um, of, of us and and they're really yellow inside I mean it's yes yeah. yellow inside and you have white eggs brown and green at the outside. On the outside. Yeah. But the difference of a farm egg compared to a city egg is totally different. I mean, yeah. the, the chickens, first of all, are eating different things. They're not being pumped with steroids, so no, you get no. a different flavor. A, a friend of mine gets eggs from the country, and they're twice as big as a regular egg. Yeah. So you have one egg, and it accomplishes the, the thing of two eggs, which I think is fantastic. So th that's what you get, these farm yeah. eggs, which is fantastic. The taste is better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The, the chicken or only feed with grass. Exactly. Yeah. Green, green grass and a little bit of, of corn, I think. Yeah. yeah. So that makes a big difference yeah, in the food. That's the difference. And uh, the, the beef, it's the same in Turinga. It's, it's not uh, slaughtering, it's shooting on the green, at the grass. You know, I don't understand this thing about dumplings, so maybe you can explain it. Yeah. Um, the sheep is very simple. You have a receipt from the great mother, to the mother, to the daughter, to the son, and this, uh, it's only um, received with uh, taste on our uh, finger taste. And loving hands. Yeah, loving hands. It's, uh, you're cooking with heart, this, uh, this receipt. It's, and uh, it's a feeling. Yeah, it's, only, yeah. It's, it's really, really a feeling. The receipt, it's different from town to town to town in Turing. You have only different receipts for dumplings in Turing. It's, it gives not the really only receipt of Turinga dumplings. It's different from mother to great mother to, to mom and dad. It's all about the feeling. It's the only feeling, yeah. Hmm. And the potatoes work very good. You, you need very good potatoes. So you have all the tourists that come, and of course they hear about your restaurant and they rush in the door, and they try all these wonderful dishes that you prepare. And what, how long have you been a chef? I'm chef for uh, 20 years. Interesting. Yeah. And head chef uh, 15. Ah. Yeah. How fantastic. Yeah. Well, I think that's wonderful. I thank you so much for sharing so, your experiences here. And I can't wait to have dinner here. And, yeah. and uh, then I'll tell you all about it after. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be right back. John Hagen's The Globetrotter is like no other travel book in the world. When I think of travel, I think of friends from around the world. 
I've traveled to Malaysia, Thailand, India, everywhere. You're going to absolutely love the book and the recipes. You will whet your appetite with these incredible aromatic recipes. Remember, my world is your world. So get up, get out and travel. So here we are at our fish market, the center of the center and behind the train one can see our city hall. There is a balcony on the left hand, on, next to the balcony, one can see a, a missioner who mentioned Erfurt for the first time, it was in the 8th century, but on the right hand side one can see Martin Luther, he studied here, he came to Erfurt as a young, young man, he was 17 years old and he came to study at the old university. He was very fast and industrial by studying and so he made the master decree after four years and his father wanted him to study law. But the law studies he interrupted immediately because he decided to become a monk. At the end he was a monk here for five years in our Augustinian monastery. I'm Wolfgang Zweigler. I'm uh come from the foundation of the Kremlbrücke in German, and I say it in German. Uh, in the uh, Middle Age, Erfurt was an uh, important marketplace, and Erfurt is situated on the river, this river you can see here. It's normally a small river and it's no problem to cross him uh, in such a fort. Uh, but in spring times, when the snow melts in the Thuringia forest, it may be a big stream and then you need a bridge. First bridges from 12th century uh, was uh, from wood and they was destroyed from water or from fire. And in the beginning of the 15th century, the city City Council says, uh, okay, we will be a bridge of stone. And 1325, the uh, first bridge of stone stand here. And uh, the dealer put uh, their market uh, stalls on the bridge. But uh, 1472, this all burned down the uh, great uh, part of the old uh, town burned down and also uh, the market stairs and then uh, the city council says okay we built this bridge wider and uh, this time you can see this construction from stones and uh, wood uh, and so the bridge are 25, 26 meters wide and it's, it was possible uh, to build uh, some houses right hand and left hand 10 meters each and 5 meters for the way between the houses. The structure is from 1485, 6, 7. Uh, Martin Luther was a little boy. <laughs> and Christopher Columbus sailed to America and this structure, this structure is the same as today. The city uh, established a foundation in uh, 1996. Uh, we look for the money, it's clear, and take care of the construction. Yeah. But I think the most important matter is the question, who rent a shop? Uh, we want to have an interesting mix from uh, craftsmen, uh, artists, uh, wine, books, uh, chocolate, <laughs> uh, and much many uh, many uh, other things, a gallery and so and I think uh, we look uh, for something. There are many school kids in town. My name is Marion Cricks. 
I'm working for the Goldham Manufactory since three years and the company is based in Erfurt. Um, we produce uh, chocolate, I would say the best chocolate, of course, in Erfurt. The company was founded in 2005 by Alex Kühn. He started with a small shop on the bridge and named his company Goldhelm. During the Middle Age, the houses had names instead of today numbers. The house here was named the Golden Helmet and then he made the name of the company Gold Helm. At the beginning of our business we produced every chocolate here in this little shop. Um, it was at the beginning a cafe where he started to make the pralines, chocolate and we produce everything here in Erfurt. All our chocolate is handmade. Uh, after the Berlin Wall came down, my boss traveled. He traveled to Australia, New Zealand and then back to Europe. And then in France, he fell in love with the chocolate. And this was the beginning of the story of Goldhelm. The first product of our company was our chocolate truffle. It's a, a truffle with 73% of coca. Um, it's, uh, you can see it here. It will, if you try, it will melt in your mouth. You don't have to chew. It's a delicious chocolate. For Christmas, we have special products. First, I will tell you about these here. Uh, it's, we call it Canache. It's a, it's a big uh, praline. It's a square. You can see it on, on the box that it is a square. It has a filling. I can tell you here. This is um, a cooked apple. We call it Bratapfel. It has a filling of apple and it's covered with a dark chocolate. This is a typical Christmas product. And another one is our stolen. So the, the filling is stolen and covered with a dark chocolate. We have at Goldham courses, so the customer can book uh, how to make chocolate, how to make ice cream or to make pralines. This window has a display of a queen with her head bowed, with her arms draped across a mirror. When you drop a euro into a slot, everything comes to life and moves. It runs for several minutes. It's really fantasy land. It's drama and fun. Stepping inside of puppeteer Martin Gosch is a fairy tale. It's not a museum, but an actual workshop. He starts with a sketch and then he carves the animated puppet from a wood block 
into a mobile figure. Chasing Wild Ass, oh, it's not what you're thinking. It's a narrative of my travel around the world. I have interspersed photos and aromatic recipes, which allows you to dream, discover, and rediscover these great destinations around the world. The title of the book came about while we were chasing jackasses in Koch Wild Ass Sanctuary in Gujarat, India. And I thought that was a great title for the book. This is food for the soul. Not only does it allow you to dream, it's adventure, it's history, it's culinary, it's culture, with a sense of humor to spice it up. Chasing Wild Ass is a celebration of life. You have to live each day as if it's your last. Remember, my world is your world. So get up, get out, and travel. Welcome to our famous uh, mustard store here in the city of Erfurt. Um, I am Thomas Heinz, the general manager of the company, which is Born Senf and Feinkost here in the heart of the city. Um, and as well as the, as the brand, I'm originally from, from Erfurt, from this town. I grew up with the mark, uh, with the brand, and I really uh, love the brand. And so, yeah, it, I think it's uh, very good to sell the brand. We've been uh, producing uh, uh, mustard and vinegar uh, for 200 years, and we are really uh, proud of the um, of the rich history we uh, clearly have and um, yeah um, the company was established in 1820 here in Erfurt uh, by the brothers Louis and Wilhelm Born uh, hence the name of the company for sure um, people uh, in this region are really well connected with the brand they love the brand they love the products and the products are and the brand is really a part of their family life so the region and the mustard and the people are really uh, well connected, uh, so to say. Um, today we almost uh, offer uh, 40 different var varieties of, of mustard, from uh, sweet to, um, to spicy, from fruity to whatever you want. Uh, we have uh, uh, um, almost everything. But the, the most and the uh, oldest um, variety and uh, the most loved variety is our uh, medium hot um, um, mustard. And even better, it's the original and uh, the only one uh, mustard to, the, to our world famous uh, Thüringer Bratwurst, the special, the special uh, sausage. And um, we think that we are convinced that our uh, mustard is, uh, makes every uh, Thüringer Bratwurst really um, special and really complete. So um, every year we have specials in our store. Um, at this time, it's Christmas time, we have a Christmas mustard, uh, which is really with Christmas spices. And we have uh, uh, three different varieties. Uh, one is Bratapfel, one is uh, Rotwein Pflaume, Red Wine Plum, so to say. And we have the, the Christmas um, uh, um, uh, mustard. We are uh, locally uh, cu um, uh, cu cultivating our, our mustard seeds in this region. So every, uh, every corn is coming, every seed is coming from this uh, region. In a, dis uh, in a distance of 30 kilometers, uh, there is our farmer, um, there is our mustard seeds coming from. Guess how many seeds are in each of these cups? Roughly 7,000 7, uh, seeds are in this cup and make or give this product the special flavor, the special taste. Beside our, our mustard, we have uh, 
ketchup as well, we have mayonnaise, we have raw horseradish, we have vinegar, we have barbecue sauces and we have funny things like uh, mustard chocolate and uh, we have um, hard liquors like gin. Uh, gin is based really on mustard seeds as a special flavor and um, we, uh, we do these funny things um, because people like it. Yeah, we have our really famous uh, ketchup as well, there we have garlic ketchup, onion ketchup, spicy ketchup, chili ketchup, uh, different kinds of ketchup. And what makes our ketchup really unique is the um, recipe which is, um, uh, consists of uh, a lot of tomatoes and less sugar compared to our main competitors. If you have a Thüringer Bratwurst, you need to have our, our mustard on top because everything else would be not the right thing to do. At Christmas time we have a Christmas uh, mustard because people ask for our uh, Christmas mustard every year again. The, the special thing on our Christmas uh, mustard is uh, there are special Christmas spices in like um, honey and like cinnamon and uh, the rest of it is really a secret, uh, you know, but uh, people like it really. Then we have a second one which is um, red wine plum, so um, it's uh, obviously with red wine and uh, uh, secret spices uh, as well. And we have a third one which is uh, Bratapfel, which is a special kind of apple. You have little apple pieces in and special spices as well. And I think this is the really last uh, jar of our uh, rot wine Pflaume, red wine plum, because people like it so much that we are out of um, stocks. We have the, uh, the uh, freshly tapped uh, uh, mustard here in our in our store where, where you can uh, uh, tap your your uh, mustard in the amount you want. Usually, usually we use this uh, kind of glass, and and then it's very easy. You take the glass like in the in the, in a pub. You you are um, um, taking a beer, so you put the button, and then there is the mustard coming out very freshly. Freshly means very fresh from our production and very, very hot compared to the, to the normal, um, to our normal uh, mustard. Mustard is made from lots of spices for all tastes. Everyone comes from around the world to celebrate the Christmas market. You know, this has been an incredible experience here in airport and I love it because it's the Christmas market. Everyone comes out, it's a great celebration of life. Remember, my world is your world. So get up, get out and travel! Look forward to seeing you next week for another colorful experience. So long for now.